Want to take part in episode polls like this one? See Cinema Snob episodes in advance? Get a personalized message from the snob or request movie reviews? Then help support the channel by contributing to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. The results of last week's poll are in, and while Godzilla has fought everything from Mothra to Mechagodzilla to Megalon, turns out he was no match for a collection of puppets. Clearly, Godzilla became very winded by wiping out early the tall man and forgotten melodrama. This is why Godzilla was very sweaty after a long battle in the lost 1979 film Godzilla vs. Dreamer. Typically, the Puppet Master series is fighting against the Amityville series, and how many sequels does this thing have? From producer Charles Band, Puppet Master is the flagship series of his Full Moon Productions. Originally intended as a theatrical 1989 release, Band felt it better and more profitable to release the film as a direct-to-video feature. And, well, given its cult status and endless sequels, I guess that was the right call. The film tells the story of what happens when a group of psychics meet in a fancy hotel to square off against some evil puppets that they totally see coming because they're psychics. The film was directed by David Schmoller, previously behind Tourist Trap and Crawl Space, years before sweeping Rachel off her feet. Co-written by Kenneth J. Hall of Evil Spawn, the film also showcased special effects by David Allen, who also worked on everything from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, to Willow, to Flash Gordon, and Ghostbusters 2, and, uh, oh, well, uh, this one seems like a given. This movie is destined to give me nightmares of waking up with tiny wooden men in my ass. That's a soundtrack that says, <laughs> it's possible that trolls might turn up in this. Not sure if I'm watching puppets or blurred out porn. That's a question I ask myself all the time. Wait, Richard Band does the music? Obviously because he is related to Roger Corman. As we open up in Bloomington, Illinois, the Bodega Inn was a hopping place in the 1930s, and it was very safe, too. We were all watched over by rejected old cereal mascots. I don't know why, but for some reason, I'm just waiting for the Sea King to show up. William Hickey plays puppet creator Andre Toulon before changing his name to Orville Redenbacher. He may know how to make evil dolls, but he's a terrible babysitter. That's just my POV and the noises that I make whenever I go anywhere. Oh, well that doesn't look quite like a bone, but I need something to chew on since my owner hid the dildos. Andre's nephew, Clark Griswold, will love this. His house will definitely become haunted on Halloween vacation. And can there be one thing from the 30s that doesn't cause the Gestapo to show up? It's a rule. If you're this short, no one will see you. It's how I've gotten free drinks at movie theaters all my life. There is a risk of injury, though. <laughs> Mr. Acme, control your dolls! Sure, no one sees this thing lurking around. That trilogy of terror was pretty scary, but he was too small for anyone to see. Good, he has a secret compartment to hide his possessions, the most famous one being this classic John Wayne doll. And someone finally has eyes! It's okay, you're just staying at the hotel from under the rainbow. There's little people all over the place! The Nazis better get there fast. Geppetto's gonna bang this doll. Now you get in there, Spider Noir, and no hooking the other dolls in the ass. These guys are much worse. At least the evil puppet knocked earlier. Oh no! We didn't get the chance to say we want to ask you some questions! And then he was reincarnated as Joe Petto. They decided to make his name more of a warning sign in this lifetime. Meanwhile, on the set of Gilmore Girls, it's present day, and Paul Lamont is still in hiding after the events of American Graffiti. I knew a car crash couldn't kill John! 
Oh, by the way, uh, your pimples have popped. It's uh, time to change shirts now. Anyway, in another doll movie, Child's Play 3, Dana, played by Irene Inferno Reference Miracle, is giving great advice to Barbara Crampton about the pros and cons of being a reanimator. And giving marriage advice, too. Do you think Buddy here's ever going to get a real job? Hey, hey, reviewing all the episodes of Magnum P.I. on YouTube is a well-respected job, goddammit. And like every good psychic reading, it has to be ruined by Sam Wheat. I have a feeling that this whole first half is just gonna be set up. I don't like character buildup now that it's happening. All right, Andrea, I want you to recreate in your mind your wildest sexual fantasy. <laughs> it's for science, I swear. Look, I have a girl with glasses with me. We're scientists. The psychics are all called to the inn by their colleague, Neil, who knows where the dolls are. Great. Can he also find my Sheriff of Nottingham figure? We also received a call from the White Witch. That's a normal thing to say in a conversation. This establishing shot hasn't changed in 50 years. These people are going to hit it off fast. Hello, I'm Megan Gallagher. Somebody married, Neil? Oh, sorry. I meant that we got a call from the white bitch. And where's Neil? We gotta give a knuckle sandwich to that some bitch. I thought you knew. <laughs> well, I guess we should stick around to bury him after his suicide. This movie is perfect for anyone who felt that dolls needed to be a little more like the big chill. I can tell Neo is very popular. Only one way to find out if he's dead, shove this up his dick. Well, if he wasn't dead before he is now, you could have just pricked him in the finger. You think that's a stone cold bummer? Try sharing an elevator with Joe von Beethoven. These people are the worst. Making the maid smell like a record shop is not proper tipping. And neither is freaking them out when they look through the peephole. No more food for me, please. I'm awfully stuffed. Paul Amat's Alex knew something was up the second he started getting visions of perfume ads. And don't even get me started on these elevator visions. I couldn't decide on a cutaway between The Shining or Bloody New Year. So I'll just show the actual movie. <laughs> Great, some angry dude jerked off on all the buttons. How do these people even function with these visions? Oh my god, Frankie. What? This is a movie star bed. Right? Ward Bond made sweet love to a pile of quarters on this mattress. Little do they know that in his will, he demanded to be buried with micropenis head. Folks, I'm glad we called this meeting to order. Is this mansion infested with evil spirits or with the ghoulies? Let's open the floor to you, Alexis Carrington. Your husband was a despicable, greedy bastard. That's enough, Dana. Fuck you, you Ivy League tight ass. You've spent this whole time judging everyone else, but you've yet to tell me what you think of this meatloaf that I made. Oh, I'm sorry things got awkward in there. I'll finish the exposition out here. Your husband brought us together several years ago to try to help in his research. He and Frank... <laughs> My takeaway from that is that shrimp porn is disgusting. Seriously, I'm not even listening to the voiceover because it's a food porn now. This little fella is named Pinhead, but this is the first movie, so he's lead puppet bite. Every killer doll has a little prankster in them. Oof, now she's gonna smack his hands with a ruler for not practicing his lesson. Good, he's killing the one person who won't see it coming. The others are too busy focusing on this hilarious move-the-body prank. <laughs> Classic. Believe me, he's dead. The corpse couldn't get it up when I tried to bang it. That can only mean he's dead. And look, just like the name of the production company, New World Pictures. I mean, oh wait, that's wrong. It's hard to pay attention when there's a roaming Harley Quinn wandering in the background. Sure, we could show more dolls killing people, but then we'd miss this game they like to play called Let's Pretend I'm Robbing a Convenience Store and Your Vagina's the Slushy Machine. These people pick the most complicated way to stay in a hotel. A simple do not disturb sign would have been fine. Ooh. 
Ooh, came back at the right time. It's like watching the principal have sex with a hot science teacher. My dick is unsure about things. Alex, however, has relocated to the Red Roof Inn. It's much more within his budget. I don't know, there's just something about the pacing in this film. Totally necessary. Maybe this booze will make you give a shit. I know of one doll that's resisting the urge to go full pet cemetery on the back of his foot. Things are even worse in Dana's room. I know I'm stuffed, but if you could be a deer and put out my head, these cotton balls are awfully flammable. This here is Blade, clearly because the name Hook was already taken by Wesley Snipes. Figures the sex scene is interrupted by a doll that's literally named Tunneler. <laughs> Don't screw her face! This dude's gonna finish no matter what! Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> Look, when you told the escort service you wanted a real doll, you should have been more specific! There's dolls that wet themselves, and there's dolls that talk, but back then we had dolls that vomited leeches. We were always trying to screw kids up. Ugh, how am I supposed to jerk off to this noise now that they've included leeches? Don't worry, he may be dead now, but he'll be reincarnated in another doll movie, Child's Play 2. Sex is the last thing Alex wants now. Would you like to come in for a little nightcap? You're drunk and holding a dead dog. No! Well, 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 another dead body. Now I don't have to have sex with the dog. I like my lovers stuffed with more cotton than an aspirin bottle. Good job, now you're causing it to rain just on him. This is when the Miss Cleo commercials really jump the shark. Cause this doll's gonna kill her. Get down there and pick that up. She puts up a good fight by throwing him against things, but still. <laughs> now who's gonna serve bitchy remarks for dessert? Everyone's back now. And... Boom! Phil Collins. Hey, look, we're the final two left. Let's move on to the last act so we can get it done before the Continental Breakfast. I thought I'd show this to you. It's where Tulin built a doll that would randomly explode. It was a huge mistake. Hey, hey, we're trying to do a plot here. This isn't your time to audition for Phantom of the Opera. This is Puppet Master. He knew that this was all a dream the second that his recurring nightmare of eight heads in a duffel bag showed up. Uh, look, we're the final two left. Let's move on to the last act so we can get it done before Continental Breakfast. Wait a minute, this is all really familiar. Come on, we have to hurry. What's going on? I'm driving. No, no, not that familiar. I don't know what he was doing exactly, but he never, never let, let me you come. come up. You thought it was strange, but you didn't really mind. Hmm. This movie's so slow, it's doubling back on itself. We gotta get out of here before these dolls show up and we're forced to kick them and ruin their integrity. Not before an exposition dinner, though. This will be a lot more of a peaceful meal than the one they had earlier. And wait a minute, Neil is alive? Why, that means no more funeral expenses. Now which of you stuck a needle in my heart? Metaphysically speaking, I killed myself. And using the techniques of the old puppet master, I brought myself back to life. This movie's more complicated than making an actual evil doll. Neil wants to live forever. I bet he succeeds. This is the only one of these movies that this actor is in. Unfortunately, he's really stupid. It was silly little wooden puppets. <laughs> Way to do this movie's equivalent of kicking a puppy. He is so dead. Doesn't even stop there with his assholery. Bastard. See? Even Mr. Bill disapproves, and he never does that. Okay, fellow puppets, can we just kill him now? Do we really need a 90-minute runtime? I know you want to live forever, but do you have to be such a dick about it? I'm the master. And you're the puppet. Hey, that's his penis! He needs that! Neil has the rare gift of living forever, so long as nothing kills him. His one weakness is remaining perfectly still and letting the dolls kill him. 
No, this is going on our hotel bill. <laughs> well, that was a fun vacation. I would have checked out, but I'm not sure this place has employees. And that's the end of Puppet Master with zero twists. Good dog, Leroy. Holy shit, the dog was Kaiser Soze! Anyway, Team Demonic Toys. I mean, uh, if I absolutely had to choose. It is funny seeing how the effects in a 1989 direct-to-video movie can still be impressive and shine over some modern horror effects. Puppet Master is a movie that's a cult classic for one reason. The dolls are really, really cool. Okay, two reasons. The other being, where does Paul Lamont get his hair done? I want details. The movie is, uh, well, it's, uh, slow. That's for sure. Really slow. As a cinema snob, I suppose that means that I think it's good. But it was good enough to not only have a giant series that spawned from it, but enough lore to be a really chronologically confused series of films. Apparently, I started out with part six. Now, if you'll excuse me, talking about movies at this length always makes me really thirsty. I'm going to go get something to drink and also see if Lloyd wants anything. But first, I just got to hop off this chair. I told you I don't want to be part of one of your bits. Go get me a water that you promised me. <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as a nasty bitch. <laughs>